Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. Do not forget to hit like and subscribe while you're here. So I know you saw the title of today's video and you're thinking, I'm confused. She's always talking about gaining more clients, making more money. Isn't that what we're supposed to do? But sometimes, unfortunately, we have certain clients that it's just, it doesn't work. We don't mesh something. So I'm going to be going over the question. Can we, as nail techs, fire our clients? right now. If you are in the New York area, I'm doing a pedicure class. We're gonna go over everything. I'm gonna show you the procedures for basic, for a spa, for a dry pedicure, acrylic big toe extensions. You will learn how to do the repairs for the big toes. We're gonna go over massage techniques, how to price your pedicures, how to upgrade, how to scale them, how to make different types of pedicures. We're gonna be covering everything. It's their masterclass. It is all day. All the details are in the link in the description box below. A full kit is provided, lunch, breakfast, worksheets, handouts, you know, you know how I do it, you know, I'm extra. So it's going to be amazing. So if you're in the New York area, please join me. It's going to be in May again. All the details are in the description box below. So when do we fire our clients? Is that something that we can do? The answer is yes, of course you can fire your clients because sometimes it just doesn't work out. So let's go over a couple of scenarios where you might encounter and I've been through all of these. This is where these references come from. I've been through this. I've had to fire clients. I've had to let people go. It's just the way it is sometimes. So when do these situations occur that we would need to fire our client? So one, if a client breaks one of your policies. So usually you'll see this when someone's like always late, they always canceling, they always have to reschedule. And then you have certain people that just, you can say, okay, what well, I'm, you're gonna lose your deposit. Deposits are only transferable once or twice, or you only have one time for this or that. And you can try to make all these rules and regulations, but then you have people that just don't care. They just don't respect the policies. So three strikes, you're out. That's just the rule. I mean, you can only reschedule, but so many times, or you can only bend the rules for somebody, but so many times. So definitely breaking your policies is a big no-no and you have to set the standard for your business. That's why we write our policies. So this is a big no-no. Like I said, three strikes, you're out, and we part ways. Another thing that I've encountered is someone disrespectful. Someone that is disrespecting my time, me, myself. They are rude uh, sometimes, especially in this, a lot of these scenarios honestly come from when I was in the shop because you don't know who you're dealing with. When you have your own clients, you, know them, they know you, you have a, a better relationship. So a lot of times you're working in a shop, you're gonna get a lot of random people and people come in and they're always gonna wanna come to you and trust me, we've been there when that one girl walks in and she comes in and she just has an attitude and no one wants to do her and you know, you just can't take this person. So if someone disrespects you or your time too many times, and for me, I honestly disrespect, you get one shot. So I've had people hit me up and they were very, I didn't like their approach. I'm not gonna lie to you. You hit me up and you're like, how much do you nails? Excuse me? How about good morning? Hey, hey Keisha, my name is so-and-so. Certain things, it sets the tone. It's letting me know and that might not be you. And then we say don't judge people, but first impressions are everything. So someone's like rude in texting or an email or on the phone when they ask you questions about your business or later on down the line, they get rude and disrespectful. This is definitely somebody that I don't have to deal with. There are way too many customers out in the world for me to sit and be disrespected by you. So disrespect is a big no-no. Also, sometimes you have people disrespect our work in a sense where maybe you have a new client, she comes in and she's nitpicking everything or this happened several times and she's just kind of rude and all oh, this design was okay, but blah, blah, blah. They have to understand that they're in your chair, in your business. They need to respect you and your rules. So if you feel disrespected, I can't tell you, everybody has a different level of tolerance when it comes to what they're gonna take. So if you feel that point where this person is annoying, they're, they're being disrespectful to me it's time to maybe let her go. Maybe once you can do it and then the next time or third time or something, but like, we're not gonna do this long term. I'm not, I'm not gonna do this. So definitely a reason to let a client go for being disrespectful. The third thing might sound shady, but discounts. People that always want discounts or they don't wanna pay. 
aka friends and family. And this sounds cruel, but money is money, time is money, products are money. So in the beginning stages, you're working on your friends and family and you know, you can do it cheap, you can do it for free, but once you become established, I'm sorry, that rule goes kind of out the window. Products are money, they gotta pay for these things. So, and I'm not saying we're gonna fire them, you can lightly let them know what has to be, but if they don't understand or respect that and respect your time and your craft, they have to go. I have a rule with all my friends from when I was in the shop to now, my friends come to me to do their nails, they pay the base price. I do give them a little bit of a discount because they are my my close friends. They don't pay for nail art or like to cut down, whatever, but they do pay for the fill-in, the full set, or and the pedicure. All the extra stuff I'll, I'll, I'll be lenient about because they let me have fun on their nails and design and stuff like that. But they have to pay, especially being in a shop. My owner was not having that. He, being here, they still pay. They understand that, they respect that. Nobody is going to be mad at you for demanding to get paid for your services. If they can't, then they gotta go. Another common situation is people that just drive you crazy. And it's hard to explain because everybody's level of driving somebody crazy is gonna be different. But you have these clients that just run you around. They want this, they want that. They're coming at this time. Oh, they can you do this. They, they're special needs clients. They're, they're crazy. They're just a mess. It's hectic. It's like whenever she comes, it's like a hurricane comes through. And it's just a lot, a lot. Some people are a lot to take. And sometimes you don't always have the time to deal with a person like this. Sometimes you don't always want to deal with a person like this. Sometimes this person might fall in line with one of the other things. They might be hectic and all over the place, which means she's always running late, which means she this or that. Sometimes you have to set the standard of what you're going to tolerate. Because if you allow this person to continue running you around in circles with your business, she's gonna to continue to do just that. People will only do what you allow them to do. So we need to kind of nip that in the bud or let them go. These are always, usually, always the people that spend the most money. So it's really hard to let them go. They come in, they drop $200 on their nails and their feet. They want this, they want that. So you're like, all right, I don't want to let her go because she spends a lot of money. But at the same time, does it, is it worth it? It starts to not really be worth it. Like she's, she's just all over the place. We all have a handful of them. Sometimes you gotta check them. Like I said, if they can't fall in line, they gotta go. And lastly, unfortunately, sometimes we just encounter people where our personalities don't mesh. It just happens. And you might be a very outspoken, loud, happy person, and this person might be like dead and quiet, or might be opposite, and they might be a lot for you if you're kind of calm and they're over the top, or it's just a personality clash. I can't explain it. There's gonna be a lot of different scenarios. You just feel like, I don't really like dig this person as a person. No, they're not paying me to be their friend. But I have had in the past where our personalities just didn't mesh. I had a girl that was coming to me. She came to me a few times last year. I haven't really seen her. I'm not gonna lie to you, she was boring as hell. Like every time she came, it was just kind of like, so how's work? You know, we just didn't really have anything to say. She was very dry, very whatever. And I don't know, because of that, I just felt like we just didn't mesh. And I haven't seen her since. I haven't hit her up. I don't care to hit her up. I'm sure she's moved on. Congratulations, good luck to her. But sometimes we just come across these people that our personalities just don't mesh. So it's just uncomfortable, it's awkward. And sometimes you might not just want to do them. So that could also be a reason why you would let that person go. So the next thing I know you're asking is, okay, so if I have this person and I want to let them go, how do we let them go? You don't want to be rude. You always want to be professional. You want to maintain always some type of professionalism. We want to keep customer service in mind. So how are some ways that we can let this person go that we are trying to fire? Again, these are just things that I have done in the past. And I mean, it's shady, but whatever. It is what it is. So the first thing you can do is make it really really hard for them to get an appointment with you. They will be frustrated every time they hit you up. I want to come on Monday. I don't have anything this week or, I, I, you know, it's, it's really tight or cancel on them. It sounds messed up, but cancel on them. Make it really hard for them to get an appointment, run them in circles. Eventually, I, honestly, it doesn't take maybe twice. You have to do that and then they'll just be like, I'm, I'm over her and they really won't. Maybe they'll try later on down the road and you can revisit that situation if you choose to, but make it really, really hard for them to get an appointment. That would be the first thing. 
this also kind of teaches them a lesson because again, if they do decide to come back, you make it really hard for them to get an appointment. They're over you, they go somewhere else, they start seeing someone and then they come back to you and say a couple months later, they will, and I'm gonna tell you, this is from experience, they will respect your work more, they will respect you more, they will appreciate your time, they will listen to your rules and your policies more because now they've experienced something else, a little mom and pop shop and then the nail tech and they miss you and now they're willing to work with you to come back. So sometimes it's tough love, you have to let them go and they will come back and it shouldn't be an issue if you choose to again, accept them after whatever happened. Another thing would be, don't do your best work. Again, this is all very shady. This is a shady video, by the way, just side note, but whatever. So don't do your best work because they'll be upset and most likely they won't come back. We're not gonna do total crap, but we're gonna do a, a little something to make them be like, eh, this set wasn't all that, I don't know. They might not come back or you, you know, you just, you, you're not doing your best or if you want to drag it out and make them be there for a long time. So now it's taking up a lot of time. The little tactics you can do as an old tech to kind of, you know, make it work. They want to do this design. Oh, I don't have this. You know, everything they want to do. I don't have it or I don't have time to do it. We just, I, I mean, like I said, it's shady, but you know, just make it a very unpleasant <laughs> experience, but we're just not gonna do the best work. Cause again, we're trying to let this, we're low key firing them, but they really kind of think they're gonna fire us. So this is all the little taxes that we could do. Another thing would be charge this person, especially that person that we spoke about, that's kind of crazy and all over the place, charge them more, charge them more, jack that price way up there and let them, they either pay it so you get paid for the craziness or they won't want to deal with it and they'll say oh you know what i'm just gonna go someplace else and and that's that so either we're gonna make some money from this this hecticness that this girl's driving me crazy or we're gonna just eventually she'll just say i don't want to pay this price that price is ridiculous i don't want to do this i mean but upcharge not, not a couple of dollars make it crazy make it like unreasonably high so that she is either like i said you're gonna be paid for your time or she's not gonna oblige and she will go somewhere else. Okay guys, so unfortunately, I hope you don't ever have to use any of these tactics. I, I really hope and pray that, but unfortunately, you probably will. If you are in this business for a long time, you will come across some people that you just don't care to deal with. So these are ways you can kind of still be professional, get rid of them, make your life a lot more easier, because I'm telling you, it's too many people and texts in the world that we have to deal with each other if it's gonna be any type of chaos or craziness or madness or disrespect. So you don't have to deal with it. Just remember, you are a working person. We're in the service industry. Just because I'm servicing you, I am not a servant. I will not be disrespected or talked to. You are running a business, you are professional, and people need to understand that and respect that. I always say we need to train our clients. Just like you are training to be a nail tech, you have to train your clients sometimes to just be a client and a client of yours so they are going to follow all your policies and such. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I will see you next time guys. Thank you, bye.